Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition. Justin is traipsing across the country on US 17. Everyone who heard the show last month heard about his annual, sixth annual, I think this is, family road trip. Renee is here to co-host with me today. And you and I were talking before we started this that not in a million years is that something I consider to be a fun vacation. I don't know about a road trip right now. But <laughs> Especially with kids. <laughs> I don't have the patience, but I will do it one day. I just have, have to work myself up to it. I and think. he seems to enjoy them. They keep doing them, so it's got to be something fun yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah. They look very happy on social media and oh, yeah. their trip. And I this year is interesting time. because he's got the electric vehicle. So I've been keeping up with this post because I'm just curious about how that works when you're traveling outside of the area that you live in, finding chargers, right. and how long is the electric charge lasting. So that part of it has been pretty fascinating for me. Yeah, he's only spent a dollar on charges so far, I noticed. He likes yes. to let us know how much money he's saving on gas. And I'm sure when he comes back and we do the August show, that's going to be the whole first segment, <laughs> is all okay. of the stuff about his car and about yep. his fun. But I am pretty stoked to hear what we're talking about today. Hungry for history? Because this is something brand new, I understand. Yes. We have a new event at the end of the summer called Hungry for History. We are bringing together 15 of our local historic sites and also restaurants in Winchester, Frederick County, and Clark County for this event. I like that you have spread it out over several days. So it runs from August 26th to September 4th because it would be really hard yes. to do all of yes. this in one day or even two days, really. And with people's schedules and being busy, you can pick and choose which ones you can do. And it's not like you're rushing around to squeeze everything in in one or two days for a weekend event. We've got some of the planners and participants here with us. Kristen Lays is here from Bell Grove Plantation. Rick Creeple is here from Newtown History Center. And Rick, I understand this was kind of your brainchild? Am yeah. I giving you too much credit? <laughs> I don't believe you are. This came about because there's a couple things going on in the back of my head with it. One, museums tend to be organizations that are highly cooperative, especially for smaller sites you can get a lot more reach if you're working with other organizations. Anytime we have a chance to collaborate, we want to do that. On top of that, I am involved in an organization called the Association of Living History Farm and Agricultural Museums. It is across the US and Canada. I've been going to a lot of their conferences and a big theme that's come up with a lot of them is food and history. So after going to that and seeing a number of sessions that some of the other participants are hosting about programs they put together, I thought, why don't we do something similar? So that's what we did. Kristen, this kind of ties into a program that you guys have going on right now at Bell Grove that talks about the enslaved cooks. So food kind of fills in a lot of blanks for a lot of these different places that are participating. Yeah, absolutely. So we love talking about food at Bell Grove, how it was made in the 18th and 19th centuries. And yes, we have a monthly program we've been doing for many years now about Judah, who was one of the women enslaved by the Height family at Belle Grove, and she was the cook. And we know a little bit about what her life was like and like to share that story, tell people more about that. And Rick, it's really cool because it's something different. Like you were mentioning earlier, people tend to think of museums in a certain box. And if they think they already know the history that they may be finding when they get to the museum, maybe they won't come. But food is something different that people don't often think of from a historical perspective. It, it often is not, but it's also one of the more fun, engaging elements of history. And that is one of the reasons why it's been such a strength for so many organizations. It's something that is very ubiquitous, everyone eats, so we were able to get a huge range of organizations together that otherwise may not have similar missions. Because at some point or another, everyone who was historic at those places had a meal, had several. Food also ties into a lot of other cultural elements. You think about, we grow food, we sell food, what's the context in which you sell it? At one of our exhibits, the steel store, there are a few chairs that are referred to as ice cream chairs, and they have little wire backs with heart shapes on them. And wouldn't you know it, at the most recent conference I went to for ALF and this Association of Living History, we are at a museum in Ohio where they had an ice cream parlor, and there's very similar chairs right out there at the front. So now you're talking about artifacts, not even obvious ones like bowls or spoons, but 
the type of chairs people are sitting in, what type of implements are we using to grow food, do we have historic heirloom seeds and varieties, there's a big variety of things that you can get into with it, some of which extend a little beyond our resources, but that's where partners can be very helpful as well. And you've got several partners throughout this that not only are the historic places offering some type of food related education, but you've got some restaurants and things that have jumped on board as well. And we even have a brewery too that's going to be brewing a historic beer, Broken Window Brewing. We have Lock Store, which will be baking bread from wheat that was ground at the historic Burwell Morgan Mill. And then Bonnie Blue, Vault and Cellar, they're also having some classes and some specials of historic recipes and High Point Restaurant in Stephen City. The historical sites that are participating, did they have to do their own research to figure out what their food angle was? We just got together and <laughs> brainstormed the idea. Rick laid it out for us and we all brainstormed things that we are already doing or always wanted to try. And that's where we come up with the list. From what I saw, some sites had to think about it a little more than others, which is okay. In some cases, it's very intuitive depending on what your mission is. In others, it's not always as much. In some cases, like Needing in Silence, that is an established program. Or I believe Patsy Kleinhouse is doing a block party. Yes, and they're and going to do some recipes from their family recipe book. Oh, right. that's cool. Yeah. So... I believe the block party was a pre-existing program for them. Mm -hmm. They expanded it to include historic recipes from the family. In our case, when you go into the steel store exhibit, it is probably our least visited, but it's the favorite among the people who see our exhibits. And it is an early 20th century store that ran through into the 1940s. And it was a general store, so there's a huge variety of items that were for sale there. It can be a little overwhelming to interpret because there's (laughs) so much. You can be going in there for years as a staff member and still be seeing new things. So when I first got my job about five years ago and I go in there to interpret to the people, I'm just looking around and I honed in on some of the food because I noticed that you had some things related to industrialized food, like potato chips that get manufactured, but you also had things like a muzzle for a horse when you're picking apples that ties to a more agrarian past. And that's something that I wanted to cover with this county because this is a county that historically has had a very big agricultural economy. And it's changing. That does tend to happen. We've actually had several major changes in the agricultural economy in the Frederick County area's history before. But we can celebrate that. We can bring awareness to it. And we can just recognize it. So who are some of the other historical sites? We talked about Patsy Klein, obviously Bell Grove and Newtown History Center. Who else is participating? Abrams Delight Museum is gonna have hearth cooking. Stonewall Jackson's headquarters is gonna have a special presentation about Stonewall Jackson and the foods that he ate. We have Discovery Museum actually is participating and they're giving out an apple to their visitors. We have a program here at the Visitor's Center that will be some American Indian programs. We'll have a dancer and we'll also have some craftspeople and special programs on things like wild food foraging. That's going to be done by Sanctuary on the Trail. And then the Clark County Historical Association is being able to give tastings of apple butter that they're going to be making there on site and then baked on bread at the lock store. I'm really surprised that Nathan's not doing something with Broken Window and the beer well, because he is, he is he the is beer the guy. The beer too. So he's not only doing the apple butter and the bread, but he is doing the, he was the one that brought the idea of bringing the Broken Window Brewing with the beer. Oh yeah, that's when his two, two of his three passions, one is baseball, but history and beer come together (laughs) is when he can make those two things work together. (laughs) Yeah, they were happy to participate. We also have the Josephine School Community Museum. They're going to be having Geneva Jackson telling a story and having a favorite recipe and some cooking tips, things like that. If you have not had a Geneva Jackson pie, (laughs) You need to do whatever you can do to get to the farmer's market or wherever she has them because they are amazing. 
And she, then they should have samples. Yeah, so. she in and of herself is a piece of Clark history, just given how long she's been there and her standing in the community. So that's really cool that they're incorporating her yeah. into that presentation. Yeah. There's also a Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation, Kernstown Battlefield, Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. We're also going to have a special Old Town Winchester walking tour. That's a lot. And we're still a good month out. There's a slight chance that more people may even join the crowd and become part of this between now and when it actually starts on the 26th of August. Yeah, hopefully not too many. <laughs> print, printing programs very soon. <laughs> we're trying to get all the details firmed up so that we can have the programs with all the information on what's happening at which site and the dates. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's get in the weeds a little bit more, Kristen and Rick, about what people can expect when they come to your location that day. Can we do that? Yes. Sure. All right. We're going to do all that when we come back. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County Edition. We're recording at the Visitor Center. I think I forgot to say that at the beginning. We're off location oh. <laughs> at the Visitor Center recording today. Renee Bayless is here with me along with Kristen Lays from Belgrove and Rick Creeble from Newtown History Center. We're going to come back and talk more about Hungry for History in just a couple of minutes. Hey sisters, you know who it is. I'm Omar, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. Keep it clean, honey. Your bottles and cans don't have to be spotless, but they should never have chunks of food still attached. Pizza boxes with bits of cheese or lots of grease can't be recycled either, though you can compost greasy boxes at your lovely home. For more on how we're rebranding recycling, look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome back to the Valley. Today, I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County Edition. We're recording at the Visitor Center. Renee Bayless is here as Justin is off gallivanting the country. We are talking about Hungry for History. It is a really cool event that you guys have helped coordinate but a lot of historical sites in Winchester, Frederick, and Clark County have come together and said, hey, we want to do this thing that runs from August 26th to September 4th. So there's going to be something for everybody and there's going to be a date for everybody to be able to go and enjoy something. Yeah, there's going to be something going on every day during that time. Some of them are having programs just one day. Some of them are having something going on throughout the whole event. There's definitely something for you to find throughout the whole week. Kristen Lays is here with us from Bell Grove, along with Rick Creeble from Newtown History Center. Kristen, you're doing something. You've got the wine festival on the first day, the kickoff day of this, which is really cool. So tell me a little bit about how that ties in yeah. to this particular event. As Rick was saying before, we always look to wine festival to celebrate the agricultural history of our area, but also its present day. And so using still a lot of those agricultural products. We have a number of meteries coming this year. Usually we've had one or two, but we've got three that are signed up. So that's an interesting, we've never tried honey wine. It's got a very old history. We've got some great wineries, local wineries. Winchester Brew Works will be back out. But what we've really done for years is had chef demonstrations in the upper level of our barn. And so we're looking to collaborate with some chefs that will be making historic recipes. We know one has already looked into some historic recipes. Bell Grove has a cookbook from the Hyde family, so we might be sharing that some of those recipes with chefs, and that's definitely how we're bringing out the food thing on Wine Fest. And it's cool because you're sneaking in that education. You're sneaking oh, yeah. in that history for people that think they're coming to a Wine Fest, and then they're going to leave having learned things that they didn't even know that they needed to know. That's right, and if you've never been out to Bell Grove, of course, you'll have a chance to tour the house. What are the hours? How's it going to work for you that day? Because you have to have a ticket for the wine fest, but I'm guessing some of these other things are either registration required or at no charge. So how's it going to work for people at Bell Grove? Yeah, so Bell Grove, you're just going to get your tickets online or at the gates, $35 at the gate. But if you buy it online, you can save $5. Included in that ticket will be all these activities during wine fest. And that's on the 26th. From Saturday, what time? Saturday the 26th from 11 to 6 p.m. And what is your web address? So we're at Bell Grove, B-E-L-L-E-G-R-O-V-E dot O-R-G. We've got some great bands, so lots of fun to go with your history. And what are you guys planning for the day, Rick, for Newtown History Center? 
we are going to have homeschool groups explore our steel store exhibit essentially by appointment all throughout the week between the 26th and the 4th. Like I mentioned before, there's a lot of items at the store that show the transition from a society that is mostly growing a lot of its own food to one where they're getting the same kind of industrial food system we have today. The plan is the homeschool groups can sign up, they can come in. I'll give a category like food preservation or food corporations. I'll give maybe a brief one or two minute talk about what those are like and the students can explore around the store to try and find examples of artifacts related to that. And then we can discuss that with them and make it a fun, interactive educational program. Is it just for homeschool students? Can I, as an adult, make a reservation or register and say, hey, I want to come with some of my friends or my kids that maybe are not homeschooled? I'm not going to object to that. <laughs> so I was thinking of homeschool because I wanted it to be an educational program, but with our capacity right now and the historic building not being built to handicap specifications, I'm limited in the number of school groups I can offer. That said, if you want to bring your kids in, how am I going to know that you're not a homeschool group? We do have a cost associated with it, $1 per student. If it's a group of adults, then I suppose... They could pay the admission fee, which is $2 a head. Yeah, either way, it's a bargain because you're walking away with so much knowledge and things that you didn't know about your backyard, literally in your backyard. And that store, again, is the favorite place of people who go to our exhibit buildings. Typically, I'll ask somebody if they've been to our main exhibits, into our wagon exhibit, into the store exhibit, which one you liked the most. Sometimes the wagon gets it, but a lot of people really like going in that store. Everything that was in the store was actually something that was sold there at one time or another. When the family who owned and operated it got it ready for the museum and for exhibits, they took items from the store that were in the attic and just brought them back down. Oh. So you were seeing things that were sold there at one time. We were talking before we started recording about the fact that Half Point Restaurant is participating and you worked with them a little bit because they're going to be serving meals from recipes, from a recipe book that you have, food and fables cookbook that came out of the Newtown Heritage Festival. That's right. So certainly Stephen City is no stranger to collaborations in that sense. Food and fables came out with the Heritage Festival about 10 years ago. The museum got a copy, and so I called High Point when some of these restaurant partnerships started coming up. I said, would you be interested in maybe making something from the cookbook? And they said yes, so I brought it over. The manager looked through. She selected a few recipes. I then contacted the folks who had contributed to those recipes to the cookbook and said, do you mind if they do this? And they were all enthusiastic about it. Another partnership is going to be with Black Shutter Antiques in Vintage West, which is on Main Street, actually catty corner to us. On the corner, yeah, the opposite corner. They are sponsoring us for the homeschool event. I'm going to have to research some historic recipes that we have listed in our archives. But the idea is that with their contribution, we'll be able to give the students a take-home activity. Oh, nice. That they could do. Yeah. That's cool. And then, Renee, Rick touched on something a second ago about food preservation. You've got a couple of these places that are doing things, like, the, for example, Vault and Cellar is going to do a demo or a class on, what, what did you say it was called? <laughs> Create Your Own Pickle? <laughs> yeah, so Vault and Cellar in Middletown is going to be having two different classes. One of them is a whiskey tasting class, September 1st. And the other one is a Make Your Own Pickle class on August 31st. So you choose your own spice mix. They're going to be using local produce, and then you can make your own pickle. And then Hanley Library is doing something on food preservation and canning. They're going to have someone from the Virginia Cooperative Extension with an introductory course to food preservation and canning in the auditorium at Hanley Library. And some of these are, like what we were talking about earlier, Bell Grove is hosting the wine festival. This is part of this. Some people are doing things that are on a certain day at a certain time, but then some, like the MSV, are going to have this running program right. that you can go by and do at any point during the 26th through the 4th. Right. So some of them have specific dates and some span. So if you go to our website, visit winchestervacom 
there's a graphic there you can click on for Hungry for History right on the home page and it has the full schedule of events, all the participating sites and the participating restaurants so you can see what all is going on and when it is and come on out. <laughs> so the idea is people should come to visitwinchesterva.com. Right there on the front page is a little banner that says Hungry for History exactly. and really kind of make a plan. Because while I joked at the top about you've got plenty of time, it runs the 26th through the 4th, there are certain things that you are going to have to schedule and plan around. Yeah, so that way you can pick and choose what you want to do. You should be able to attend more than one thing since it's so spread out. And Kristen, the wine festival isn't the only thing that Bell Grove is participating in. You've got something before the whole thing wraps up at the end that people can come back and take in, right? Right. So I was mentioning earlier that Meeting in Silence, A Glimpse into the Life of Judah the Enslaved Cook, is a monthly program. So we'll be doing it Labor Day weekend. That's Sunday afternoon at 2.30 on September 3rd. We'll be having that free program. So when you go to the website and you see this list, Renee's really helpfully coded the events that require a fee, there's a code for if it's kid friendly, so that will really, really help you plan what you want to do as well. It'll make it really easy for parents at a glance to figure out, okay, this one we're going to take the kids to, and this is when the kids are going to the grandparents' house so that we can go <laughs> and enjoy this one, this one, and this one. And we do have a good number of things for kids. Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation is going to be doing a Civil War kids camp, and they'll be having some cooking demonstrations and cooking lessons with the interpreters in Civil War era clothing. So you can sign your kids up for that. You need a reservation. But yeah, there's several different activities for kids. The activities at the at the uh, visitor center with the American Indian that will be kid friendly, and also of course the Discovery Museum. So. The Old Town Winchester walking tour, we've done the show and talked about those before. Are they happening now or does that kick off for the fall season with this event on September 1st? So they've been going on since May. They're usually May to October. We're having just a special themed one this time during the Hungry for History event that will have a food specific food history theme. So that sounds fun. So yeah, it's a little different. Awesome. And where can people go to get more information? Visit winchesterva.com. And then, Rick, if people want more information about Newtown History Center, your hours, when you're open, what kinds of things they can find there, where do they get more details about you? We have a website, newtownhistorycenter.org, N-E-W-T-O-W-N-H-I-S-T-O-R-Y-C-E-N-T-E-R.org. We are also on Facebook and Instagram. And do you have regular hours that you're there? Is it by appointment only? Our hours vary depending on the season. This time of year, we're open on Sundays from 1 to 5, and then Tuesdays through Saturday from 10 to 4. Come September, we'll be closed on Tuesdays, and then come the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we close for the season. But throughout all that time, if somebody calls and makes an appointment and the staff's available, we can be open for them. And that's the other upside to having social media. All of that is there, so people can check that before they head out the door or anything else. Precisely. Whenever we have seasonal changes in hours, I make sure to update it on our Google account for Google Maps, on TripAdvisor, and on our social media. And Kristen, Belgrove's website one more time? It's belgrove.org. Don't forget the E on Bell, so B-E-L-L-E-G-R-O-V-E dot O-R-G. And like Rick, are on Facebook and Instagram as well. You guys do a really good job with your social media, I have to tell you. I'm going to give you a quick shout out, a quick pat on the back there. Because you guys do great with what you post and responding. Commenting on stuff, I'll be scrolling through my feed and Bell Grove has commented on something totally random. I'm like, good for them. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking some time to come and give me all the details for this. Thank you for putting it together and being a great co-host. <laughs> Justin is gone. He may not have a job when he gets right. back. He can have the job back when he returns. <laughs> but Rick, Kristen, thank you both. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I will be back tomorrow. It is a brand new episode of The Valley Today as it is every single weekday. So meet me back here for it just a few minutes after noon.